Hi, this is a short tutorial of how to create a basic text logo for photographs as watermark in GIMP. I'm going to create my, well, recreate my logo and then insert it into Lightroom and then also apply it to an image for you to see. Okay, we'll get started here. We'll go to File, New. And you have a create a new image template. My image size, I set mine to 640 as the width and 400 for the height, which is right there. Click OK, and you get this little box here, which is where this is our workspace. And it's also the background of what I'm going to add to it. OK, first thing you want to do is go to your tool section and you go to your text tool okay you click on your text tool and the next thing you want, well here I wanna do this before I go on um, it's a list of your different texts that you can use and just scroll through to start off I prefer well I use a French script Okay, and then we'll see what the size is. But from that point, you can also choose the color for the font. And the size, this is where you will change your size also. So to begin, you click, left click, and drag, which creates your first box. And you just add letter. This is just recreating my logo. Okay, I'll move it down a little bit. You have your D there. Then you go in again, create another box. And W for Welch. And these little boxes on the side here help you pretty much move the logo itself. And place it where you want it. I'm trying to make it look seamless. Okay. Get that out of the way. Create another box. And that's for the P. The P I am going to use as make it larger. As a repetent the repetent representation of personality photography. So just to try just trying to make it look fancy. And I guess I guess that'll have to do. Yeah, it'll have to do. Okay. And from there to create another box. But first, I'll have to change my font because I want to use a different font for the remaining wording. And monotype course of italic. And I'll drop the size of the font down to 44. Take the first letter off the word because this is its representation of the word. Okay, that's a little too far in, so move this up. About there. And slide this back. Oh, I'll leave it here just in case I need to move it. And we create another box for the rest of photography. And then I'm slide that into place. And we're pretty much almost finished here. Um, the next thing is you can also change the colors of each letter if you want. 
Um, I prefer to, well, what I did is use the two back letters as a different color. So I'll put red, oops. Go right there. Go back and red again. That does not look good. So let's make this one black. make them all black. I want this. Well, the, you'll have to work on the size so that they'll blend in pretty much. Um, let's change these colors just to matter of fact I might start using this one. Okay. Looks pretty good. Okay, your next step is to make it a transparent image. Okay, th these are your layers of what you already placed here in your box. Okay, so the next thing is you go to background. You right click and you go down to where it says delete layer. You click that and you'll get a a graph. It will remove what is this, the the background, and you'll see the checkerboard dark gray, light gray. So we delete the background. Now it's pretty much transparent, but first you have to save it or export it. Do not save it. So you click File, and you go down to Export. You choose your location. I'm going to put it in email. I'm going to name it Final Logo. And you save it as a PNG file. Do not change that at all. Keep it as a PNG. And then you click export. Uh, leave everything here as is. I never change anything. You know, the compression, nothing at all. I don't touch that at all. And you export. Now let's close this out. Close without saving. Okay. Okay. Uh, for example's sake, let's just say we did you know, all the editing we needed to do for this image. Now we're ready to export it. But before we export it, we want to insert our PNG file logo. So we'll go to export. Okay, before exporting, make sure you know where items are going. It's going to the desktop and my email file. I'll change the name here. Okay, I'll scroll down. Make sure your watermark is checked. Click on your section there. You scroll to the bottom where it says Edit Watermarks. And then make sure that you have Graphic checked off. Okay, so you click on Graphic. You go down to Image Options. Choose your image. Which should be in, let's see, desktop, email. Ah, I think it went to the desktop. Hold on one second. Yeah, final logo. Okay. Okay, and there you are down here. Now we're not finished. Your next step is to scroll down to your proportion or your watermark effects. You go to you know your proportion, make sure that's checked. With the proportion you can pretty much change the size of the watermark. But on photographs you really do not want it to be too big for your clients. You don't want it in the center or anything like that. You know if you're giving it to a client. If you're just doing it to protect your image you can what you can do, you scroll down, you click the center it goes into the make it big and you can move it oops no you can't move it as yet but um you make it as big as you you can there because you cannot move around and then you use your opacity to dim it out okay 
but for now, we're going to put it to the bottom right. You change your proportion. And when you place it here, you want to make sure it's not too close to the bottom. I mean, even if you have the whole thing showing, what you want is away from this edge and also away from the bottom. Maybe it's a little bit smaller. Because the problem that you'll run into, if you are going to print your image, what will happen is that if it's too close to the bottom, when it's printed, sometimes the picture does not print the, in, the entire way. So when it prints, let's say you send it to Walgreens, sometimes it will print and the wording at the bottom of your um, image will be cut off. So you want to make sure it is not too close to the bottom. Okay? All right. I mean, if you like, you could also place it, you know, you know, wherever you like, really, wherever you're comfortable with. Um, but the bottom right corner is always somewhere I place my model. You can put it in the center bottom. That's fine also. It's not affecting anything. But I prefer it here. Okay. So then when you have it where it is, it's set, it's positioned properly, and all that. You just click save, and then you save it. Final uh, test. Logo. And you look over your stuff. Well, you click create, and that's the one that will pop in here. Final test logo. These are a list of ones that I do. And um, if you want to change it or whatever, let's say you have a black image, a black background on your image, and <clears throat> you want to change the color. The reason why I made, see these are all my logos, they're all different colors, so just in case if a background is, let's say black, I have it in white. If it's white, I have where I can use any other color. Um, if there's a red background, I can, you know, always go back and change them change them to whichever logo I want. So um, that's that. Then you have here. <sighs> it's going to desktop email. Okay. Then all you have to do is export. And that is complete. And here we are. There's the image, and there's the logo. It's not going to be cut off when it gets printed if you do print. So that's the tutorial on creating a logo with GIMP and inserting it into Lightroom to place on your image as a watermark, a graphical watermark. Thank you, and have a great day. Bye-bye.